Good evening. I Rapstein, and here we are with your financial market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening of Tuesday, and this is the first of August, 2023, just after 6:40 p.m. Central Time. Last night I was late, and I know one of you wrote, "Hey, these things are getting too late." And you're right. Unfortunately, these are free for you. I have to put out all the things that bring in money to the company, and if they take longer, say la vie. They take longer. What can I tell you? All right. I'll do my best, though, to put them out earlier. So it's an interesting time. Number one, this is where the Fed quarterly refunding takes place. So there's about 102 billion of that coming on. We have seen in the past seven, eight days, a big break, not a rally, but a break into the red in bonds and notes. Maybe that part is done with the market. We'll see. As you get to these, the market likes to price in ahead of time, kick the yields where they think you're going to have to pay. And then the market is like, uh, you took the pressure off the market. We'll see. You can see how you're still up in the energies. No change there. World economies are doing better. Less supply of oil is being made intentionally coming on by OPEC, and it's having an impact. You have to pay attention to that. In the metal markets, the big, if you will, increase in bonds and note yields supports the dollar, which in turn puts pressure on the metals. I don't understand why the copper went up to the $4 mark. China talks the big talk. It doesn't do the walk. I've said that to you repeatedly since I got back from vacation. They want to help housing. They want to do this. They want to do that. Show me the money. Show me the money. There is no money. If there's no money, how do you get the copper going? Because the housing, people aren't going to spend what's in the bank. You've got to give them a reason to do it. And they haven't done that yet. Now, it is nice to see the euro pop tonight, which means when the dollar opens, it's going to be down. Keep in the back of your mind that in the British pound on the third, the third, that's Thursday, You've got the Bank of England decision on what's going on. You have tonight, I think it's tonight or tomorrow, Brazil is going to tell us what they're doing. They've been something of a leader, too. Will they actually drop rates? That would be fascinating. As for the stock market, been looking for some pressure to come in, and we're getting it. So as we take a look, again, I want to repeat. Look at how close you are to these highs. Will you go for them or back off? Oppenheimer came out today and said, Okay, we see the S&P finishing off at 4,900 the year. Mike Wilson, who was wrong the whole move this year, turned and threw in the towel about a week or so, going, by the way, he's a great trader, so you're not hearing me knock this man. Nobody wins every year. I mean, I, I wish you thought that everybody walked on water. They don't. Take a look. Now the market, and he's saying, you know, if this is it, if this is as bad as earnings get, what do you do in the next part of the year? Because what I think happens is we get those year-end rallies. You're now in August, all right? So you're more than halfway through the year. When we take a look at what's going on, as I told you, I think there's consolidation. You've run into that now if you look at this chart pattern. And suddenly with today's action, you've got lower highs, lower lows. So for the moment, until you take out the highs of Monday, I look for this market as being in an area here that where it can break down from here. The first guess is for support at the 18-day average of closes. I call that the line in the sand. Remember, when you close over it, it tells you what the bias is, which would be up. Close under it, the bias goes down. And when you look at where the market went, it hasn't been able to get back to a Bollinger Band. I know you'll say, but I wrote one higher. It's not what I'm saying. Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within them 95% of the time. You can go higher and never hit a band, but I also measure it with momentum. And if you haven't taken my enhanced Bollinger Band course, shame on you because you're not understanding what this can do. If we step back and look at this market right now, let me get this right here. This is the close yesterday, Monday. Both numbers are over 80. On the close today, you closed at 79.35. You had not lost the embedded reading. You're losing it right now with the 66 reading. I don't have what I call, uh, one of my brokers, Ron, called it, named it perfect. 
stochasticitis, which means you look and see what's going on and you're, you're with these stochastics every two minutes out of it. I don't do that. He's right. And he told me that, I don't know, 15 years ago, something like that. And I remember sitting at a desk in, in offices where he told me that. And I got, you know, I think you're right on that. It's here, the momentum is being lost. You're not a buyer. If you're long and you didn't take something off the table, shame on you. If it's lost, you gotta be out because the odds, that's all it is, the odds strongly favor, price will go to at least the 18 day average of closes if it's lost before it gets over the high that you see right through there. Momentum here, not embedded. You lost that a while back and you went right to that 18 day average. Again, the line in the sand. None of these markets have given that up. Technically speaking, the NASDAQ is in better position than the S&P is. You've already gotten back to this 18-day average. The pros will probably nibble into this market here at 15,660, and they'll have a stop of about 100 points under 15,000. The 546 area is what I'm thinking. In the Dow, now nah, you're still embedded. So the Dow 30 is still stronger than all these other markets. It's keeping its embedded reading and it's still in the bull camp and you're flirting with losing it in the Russell. So you've got these different indices wobbling, if you will, in different ways. In the bond market, as far as I'm concerned, this was the short cover area. Let the Fed do its thing, but I, I want no part of that now. I think the market got cheap enough where the pros have covered shorts. I wish I could say that in the five year, I'm not. The trend is down, you're oversold and you're refusing to go there. Could be a sign that you wanna protect your short positions. Markets that get a lot of bare news and don't break much on it could be a warning sign. In the dollar index, I now think that today, a re-challenge of the 100-day average, a lot of resistance at it. We'll see if the market pays attention to that or not. Overbought, yeah, could go to the Bollinger Band, but I don't think there's a lot of juice left on this move. And in the Euro, you made your run back to the 100-day average in green, and you're finding your support. It's not bullish, but it's no longer as bearish as it was. In the British pound, oversold. I think I'll let the bank do its thing if I were a trader and say, I think I walk away from that trade. Now in Bitcoin, Bitcoin got down today, right where the cover zone is. I mean, it's classic what I teach in my charting course. You got to the 100 day average, basically the Bollinger Band and the pros covered and boom, you've moved away from that very, very quickly. And all of a sudden you're up from that number. That number was 28,590 and you're back to 29,8. That, that's pretty high. Uh, then we look at the energy markets. Now this is the differential between Brent and WTI. It keeps falling, so the two are just coming back very, very similar, about a $4 difference in their prices. They're fully embedded. What do you think that means to me? Bullish, 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 all the way through on these, but not in that gas. You heard me tell you, when you get hot weather, you don't get a big rally, you got a problem. And that's just what happened here. The trend is down. I don't think there's a lot of downside. I think you're more sideways than anything. 248 and a half looks to me to be the next support zone. Now, you know, we offer an awful lot to you and it's free. This is what our free offer page looks like. You'll see that you can click on any of these blue areas and when you do so, what will happen is you're gonna move yourself right on through everything down through here. Each one you click will change color and then there's a form right at the bottom of the page. You just fill it out, hit send, we get it. Within a business day, you get all this. And you choose which ones you want. You don't have to get flooded. You can write us notes, by the way, in the form, and we'll, we read them. We'll pay attention to what you want to get. You can get access to my paid research for a limited time, Lynn Research, our charting software, the Arun Indicator video series, free. Pivot points, free. All of these different parts of the market, you choose the exact thing that you want. There's quite a bit there to choose from. Uh, we add to it each year, but these are the mainstays. And I have found that most people that uh, want good guides to in trading indicators and like, it's right there. Again, this is where you're gonna fill out all the information. If you have a note for us, just let us know. Then you hit send, boom, we get it. We send it to you generally the next business day. 
You can also click right up here at the top of this video, and we'll have a link there for you that'll take you to this page or go to irapstein.com. I'm Ira. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.